Hi there, I'm Dara Dandrant. I'm a creative director and strategist, journalist covering immersive technology and media, and a curator who proudly teamed up with South by Southwest this year to bring you three panels on the future of fashion and technology. The following, titled Out of This World, Fashion and the Metaverse, features voices who are designing for virtual landscapes. Please enjoy it and have a great South by Southwest. Thank you both for being here today for South by Southwest 2021. I know the world is a little crazy right now, but the festival's still on, the show must go on. Uh, and I'm just so excited that both of you are here with me today to talk about fashioning the metaverse. I mean, both of you have worked in such interesting aspects of fashion and technology and the audience this year. A lot of people are coming from tech, but I really want them to know why fashion fashion tech is so, so important and where it's going, the future of it, and both of you are great voices. So I'll let you each introduce yourselves, Nani and Carrie. Um, uh, let's say, Nani, please go first to talk a little bit about what you're currently working on, your studio, the Emblematic Group, uh, and maybe some recent fashion projects. I know you did some very exciting stuff in the past year. So, um, yeah, I've been running Emblematic, uh, really, I guess the first virtual reality piece I did was in 2007, first AR piece in 2008. So I've been thinking about immersive technologies as a space for telling news and nonfiction in particular for a long time. Um, but, um, uh, you know, and sort of non-gaming practices around this kind of content. Um, and it's been an incredible journey of... Um, uh, trying to tell real stories, trying to tell funny stories, trying to tell painful stories, trying to be and being passionate about my work. Um, this last year, um, we've been really busy. Um, I think the pandemic has further accelerated the kind of work that's come out of Emblematic. And um, it included um, uh, doing a virtual production for Milan fashion show um, that also has a WebXR component for the amazing fashion brand GCDS, Italian fashion brand, God Can't Destroy Streetwear. Um, and then we have some other projects we can talk about through the panel. Cool. I love that. Thank you. What an awesome introduction. Um, and Carrie, I would love for you to talk about The Fabricant, uh, an awesome, awesome digital couture house. Uh, I've been so impressed by what The Fabricant's been doing, really redefining certain standards for virtual fashion. Tell us a little bit about what you're working on right now, if you can, uh, and how you got to creating the Fabricant. Yeah. So I'm Kerry. Uh, I'm the, one of the founders of the Fabricant. My background is in uh, 3D film and visual effects. And my co-founder is a digital only fashion designer. And it's the convergence of the two different industries uh, uh, where we create digital only collections or digicouture pieces. And we're only ever interested in creating digital only fashion and not touching physical fashion at all because we say digital clothing is the most sustainable clothing that exists so uh, that's uh, that, that that's where that's where our passion lies and uh, also from a from a creative uh, standpoint from a technological standpoint they're just interesting challenges we we define ourselves as the pioneers who get to create the digital only fashion industry and we're just removing the layer of functionality from clothing because if we wear clothing just to cover our bodies and keep ourselves warm, we don't have that aspect. But the aspect that we really focus on is the identity aspect of clothing. Yeah. Uh, we all put on clothing to identify ourselves and tell, tell stories. It, it is a form of storytelling. If you choose not to care about fashion, that just happens to be a story. And that's the background that I come from as well. I've just learned so much about the fashion industry and it's super exciting. And uh, yeah, I love being part of the movement and uh, we're true believers that the digital only fashion industry will be much bigger than the physical fashion industry, simply from the point that it's much more scalable than physical fashion. Mm -hmm. To sell digital only clothing, we just need to make that one asset that can be utilized in so many different ways, unlike physical fashion, which is just about producing more and more and more if you want to grow as a fashion company. And yeah, so those are the things that we're super excited about. Those those things all sing to my heart. I feel very strongly about addressing uh, and this talk is one in a series of three for South by Southwest about combining the fashion industry and the tech industry. 
And in one of the other talks, uh, I bring up sustainability a lot. And you touch on that. And I'm going to bring that up uh, throughout this talk because it's one of the worst things for tech and for fashion. That's also why digital fashion really appeals to me from a business standpoint, a design standpoint, uh, the point, Carrie, that you just made about it, you know, being very much evergreen, uh, very much always consistent and available. There's just so many directions that the two can go. Um, so my first question for both of you, uh, why, why do you think that this is an important intersection? I mean, we all know it because we work in this overlap. Our work is touched between the two worlds. But why is this really important for people to care about, for people that don't yet see the significant overlap? Maybe they're seeing it as novelty. Um, and feel free to jump in if, if you have an idea that comes right to mind. Well, one of the things that I have to say about this is that because I, I build so many things virtually, right? And yes, I look at what things look like um, and how they, they move or, or, or what happens within a, you know, a body occupying a space. Yeah. Uh, but I was never, I was, you know, always slightly distant from fashion and thought about it more as a commerce than an art. But working on this project really shifted my thinking. Um, when we began to look at the way, you know, a string on a bikini could, could could bounce mm -hmm. or a fabric can move in the digital world. Um, it gave me a new appreciation for um, uh, fashion, literally, um, in a way that I just, you know, I had a I had a perfectly, you know, reasonable relationship with. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It just didn't matter that much to me. Um, but now I have a very different perspective. So I think it was interesting that I had to be a digital creation and a digital experience that um, opened my mind to these ideas of what fashion could be. Yeah, and just to Great add answer. to that, yeah. I, I think the true value of 3D in the fashion world is to create those situations that you can't do in the physical world. And I think that's what the technology really provides is a, is a new aesthetic language uh, for industry that's already super creative, super passionate. Uh, you know, th that's what I really love about the, the designers and the brands and the industry itself. Like they really just come in it with a lot of emotion and a lot of heart. And now with the technological advancements, uh, VR really moving forward and 3D really moving forward and becoming much more accessible and easier to produce and much cheaper to produce, it really kind of brings it closer to fashion designers and brands to start really be creative and passionate about it because previously it's been a barrier of entry for them because they're not yeah. big on technology. They really are, they're kind of being put away uh, from it. But now, uh, yeah, it's just like converging these two industries, what Nani's doing with VR, what we're doing with mm -hmm. visual effects and gaming, and now with the emergence of uh, blockchain and crypto space becoming super interesting as well. Yep. There's just so much space and opportunity to just define what that future of the digital only fashion industry looks like and how we can really start creating those new narratives. Uh, because the traditional fashion narrative is, is around the catwalk or, uh, you know, fashion film is a fairly new concept as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we're starting to see, to see so much more creative executions uh, using new technology that both of our parties are doing. So we had- um, Absolutely. We were interviewed by um, uh, somebody who's making a, a documentary about the project actually, um, uh, because I guess it was so unique for the Milan Fashion Week um, and the kind of documentaries you've been doing. Um, around fashion that this is, uh, uh, but, but in the discussion, we were talking about how in the crazy schedule we were keeping and the amount of people who were involved in our project, that at some point along the line, somebody had a family emergency left, another person, her contract went out and they, and the company who we're working with, um, I guess they felt they could get by without her. I'm not really sure. Um, and in the process, somehow the feet got um, mixed up and the heads got mixed up. The assets? And in these, in these digital models. 
And okay. suddenly we're finding that the wrong shoes are on the wrong feet, essentially because when you're doing the animation of the way the body has to move, yeah. they are either wearing a high heel and the body moves one way or a low heel and the body moves another <laughs> way. And suddenly we yeah. have the wrong feet on the wrong body for the wrong animations. And, um, you know, we had to, as you can imagine, make these very, you know, significant swaths back. But as this director pointed out, he was like, well, that's like the real, you know, fashion show problem where the <laughs> it's true control, right <laughs> they're trying to walk down the runway so you know i'm not saying there aren't similar problems that we're going to face as we go through this i mean there is some flexibility but you know it's surprisingly the same kind of problems can arise um that's and uh, that was one of the ones we, we experienced in a rather painful way <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I see. oh go ahead go ahead yeah, so like in our design process, uh, we, we actually embrace technological glitches. So that becomes That's part great. of the design process as well. Like when something goes wrong, like for me, it's just like I look at the 3D software, I'm like, that's wrong. But a fashion designer who's not typically doesn't know the 3D software gets super excited about like kind of like this weird, funky thing that happens because it just can't happen in real life. We also have this other. I think. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, another very funny problem, which if you look at it, you could, you're going to have to you know, I'll let you just try to find the glitch, the moment. But yeah, the way that we were making cool. the pieces, and I don't know, Carrie, how you were doing them, but we were creating the clothes and the Olympic animations in Marvelous Designer, and then the separate animations in Unreal. And when, you know, obviously they have to marry together. And when we were doing the, the finale, in which every model's animation and clothing animation all has to work, and the tower's rising, and da 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 so, you know, we literally melted one of our $7,000 computers making this thing. Um, but um, uh, there's a moment when, of course, the body, the breast of one of the models actually slips out of the clothing. And we just didn't have time to re-render the shot. <laughs> and it's only for a couple of, you know, seconds, but it's in there. So we even oh, have God. kind of a slip, right? The classic <laughs> slip is even classic in our nipple slip. When <laughs> in the piece, so when uh, when the hilarious. virtual world you know, emulate reality, the magic of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. The magic of it too is that you know it, it is in a cold space. It's a it can be a really lush and beautiful space to create fashion in. Yeah, you absolutely. do remind me, both of you are, are reminding me of my time spent at New York Fashion Week. I, I'm also a fashion photographer and director, and I've worked with a bunch of different designers, mostly uh, independent streetwear brands to direct their branded campaigns or lookbooks. And it's a lot of fun, but that work is sometimes taken to Fashion Week. And talking about the pan pandemonium, just like the pure chaos, being backstage sometimes. It, it's so true. Nani, to your point, Carrie, to your point, like, it is so amazing when the worlds that we're building, uh, uh, you know, in these virtual landscapes do begin to replicate, um, or not replicate, but imitate problems that are already happening in real life. And so this is an interesting comment on how do you blend these worlds? I mean, do you create the impossible? Do you create things that could not exist? Or do you take from real life situations funny like uh models getting the wrong shoes but still having to walk the walk um or or some type of glitch and being like you know what We're, we have to make this pattern work it doesn't matter i really loved how this failure actually turned into a win do you guys in your work seem to try to pull from reality or do you just throw all of that to the wayside and create things that could only exist within virtual space uh, it's it's definitely both, and it really depends in what context you're working. When it, when you're working with a fashion brand, when you're working with a physical fashion brand, you actually are con confined to the limitations of physicality because you need to make the garment look like it does in real life. Now, when we're doing digital only fashion collections, we don't have that. That's when we get to really start playing around and get to be really creative, and that to me is the most exciting part as well because that's. That's when we get to create something new. That's when we create to get new narratives, you know, new new visuals. Uh, but working with brands can be a lot of fun. And I'll use the example of uh, when when the pandemic started. One of the biggest brands in the world came to us, and they're like, 
we got 400 key looks and uh, typically they're done like two hours, uh, two days before the show itself. How many can you digitize in those two days? And I was like, literally like zero. <laughs> we cannot do a single one just because they're used to working in this very specific way. So it, 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 it is definitely challenging uh, working with kind of like the old world. So there's a lot of kind of education that goes into it. There's a lot of process that goes into mm -hmm. it. And just, you know, just beforehand just saying like, hey, this is a process. It, it takes us about eight weeks to, you know, create this fashion show that you're typically used to. You know, they still use eight weeks to create fashion shows, but they work on it kind of like very, you know, last minute, still changing looks. And a typical thing that we get like, oh, can you roll up the sleeves? Or can you open up the buttons? Mm -hmm. You know, because it's so easy to do in, in, a, in a physical shoot. Mm -hmm. But like, okay, rolling up the sleeve is going to cost us another one to two weeks. <laughs> Opening right. up that button is going to take It's going to cost you guys another one to two million. Um, right. it, um, yeah, fashion is the ultimate startup sprint. <laughs> doing like getting ready for a fashion show is there's no sleeping you're gonna work all night and and god hope it's done when it needs to be done i i'm glad that you bring that up too that's a crazy story of someone oh, coming a company we have the problem, same problem too it'd be like <laughs> just make her walk with a little less hip swing and it's like <laughs> uh i can but it's gonna take a week you know, we've got to redo the body, and then we've got to redo the animation, and then we've got to redo the clothing animation, and then we got to match the clothing animation to the body animation. I'm like, so understanding what that is, but, oh, can you just give the model some spiky hair? No problem. We can do that. You know, that's <laughs> really easy. Or can you change your skin color from green to blue? No problem. Like, So, like, you know, so, like, trying to understand where we can make these kind of shifts and changes digitally. Um, but I carry well, I'm also really interested and I've been starting to hear, you know, more about um the idea of um using a kind of blockchain for provenance on digital clothing, uh marketplaces for the sale of uh these, you know, right now we have these kind of places, you know, that we can go to like Sketchfab for objects and scan things, also digital, you know. Uh, objects as well that people are making, but it feels like fashion is starting to create its own space, um, and I'm so interested Definitely. in that. Uh, I would absolutely. love in in your answer, Carrie, if you could bring up the auction from like a year or two ago. Okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah. That is a surreal story. I mean, it made international news, but I love the story, and I would love to hear it from you as if you could incorporate it somehow because people need to hear this. Yeah, absolutely. So in May 2019, we sold a, a digital couture piece, essentially a digital only garment on the blockchain for nine and a half thousand dollars. And this was an auction. at uh, It was a, a what do you call it? A summit called Ethereal in New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a, it was an art auction. The money went into uh, charity to to support blockchain artists or crypto artists. And uh, that that really started a big wave for us because that's the first time that fashion industry saw that there's monetary value in digital only clothing. And uh, it was it was kind of quiet PR wise for about six months until it really started picking up. And now it's just like most recently we were in uh, in Vogue Japan. Uh, somebody just today uh, uh, emailed me from uh, a Swiss newspaper, one of the biggest Swiss newspapers awesome. as well, asking for it. So it's a it's an ongoing thing, you know. Like when we talk about fashion being seasonal, uh, you know, our season still keeps going on, you know, almost yeah. almost two years further. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, for me, for the digital only fashion space to to really take off and exist, yeah, I think blockchain plays a massive component in, in that mix because we we need to allow for provenance. We need to allow for unique digital assets. We need to allow for those limited editions, drop culture, kind of like the, how, how the fashion culture already works. Uh, we need to be able to put that in the digital only context and blockchain is the what's going to power that. So there's already a lot of marketplaces. So maybe you've seen like NFT crypto art space being really big. You know, there's a website like uh, Nifty Gateway, Super Rare, Maker's Place, you know, they're making big numbers. And just yesterday I saw like this collection of jackets was sold for something like $77,000. And this is a skin that you can wear in like 
Unreal Engine, in games, you have a Snapchat filter for it. So we need to start finding those utility mm. cases. Like how, how do we use digital only clothing in our lives? Not that it's just a, a crypto art piece that you own and it just lives on a USB stick. How can we actually utilize it in our lives? And I think gaming is the current opportunity and we're going to start seeing AR filters coming out right now. And of course, VR space is, uh, is big. You know? So there's a lot of things happening. Yeah, one thousand percent. You also, nailed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the, and the other thing that's interesting, Carrie, I think, is with it is, um, we are going to be more frequently representing ourselves in the digital space, right? We're going to be meeting in virtual worlds, and you know how how do we want to present ourselves? And and it's equally, you know, unlimited in terms of. You know, do you want to have an identity that people can recognize you or do you want to be fluid or um, yeah. what's your going to be your um, your future self? And um, it's I think it's wonderful. It, it actually adds attraction to be in these virtual spaces, which, um, you know, I, I can't tell you how happy I am that I'm not having to travel to get to have this conversation with you. I, I do want to meet you at some point in person, but I'd rather meet you at a point we could be in, that. you know, Love be it. somewhere really, you know, hanging out and having a nice meal and um, we're together because we want to be together and not because circumstances are forcing us to be together because we think that we have to be together in order to achieve the kind of things that we were achieving before the pandemic. I mean, those are the positive sides. And I think what you're doing about, you know, creating the ways that we're going to interact, that'll make it um, even more um, uh, visually rich and enjoyable uh, is thrilling. So it's it's all about the virtual identity and, and the conversation that we have, like basically because of everything that you just said, it's like, we, that's the type of stuff that we talk. Uh, on, a, on a daily basis. But, you know, the additional question that we have to that is like, how can we actually create value for people's lives as well? You know, because there's mm -hmm. this big thing that, okay, social mm -hmm. media is uh, taking away value. How can we actually create a space where digital only fashion or the virtual identity space, because the virtual identity is much bigger than digital fashion. It's also avatar, it's a representation, it's our own narrative in the virtual space. How, how will we tell that story and really connect to communities, connect to each other and just have like different people come together and form like a force for good and a force for power to do something really powerful together? Because I think that that's what's the power of this. Like it, it, it's, it's a true shame that we can't come together physically because I, I really do miss that aspect uh, extremely, extremely much. But at the same time, if you look at kind of like what Clubhouse has done, uh, Twitch, Discord, it's united the whole world to come together with with a kind of a united goal to do something, uh, you know, m much, much bigger. And I think that's what digital only fashion is like. It's not only us. It's not only you. You know, you have to have like multiple different players, basically the whole world to start taking part in that conversation for it to really take off. And again, we just need those use cases, all those te that technology. And I, and I love the example of the smartphone. It just made everybody a photographer and a videographer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that everybody knows how to create great pictures and great videos and great narratives, but it's a tool that actually allowed everybody to make content. And I think the next step in that is like 3D, VR, AR, XR, <laughs> digital fashion, you know, like all of these kind of buzzwords, they're going to start becoming like tools and, you know, accessible tools that everybody can use, that everybody can play around with that everybody can take part in similar to what the smartphone has done. And, and I think that's when it's going to start really getting exciting because it's again, those narratives, like everything to me, just comes down to storytelling. You know, it's like such a kind yeah. of a caveman thing to do, you know, to connect communities, everything that we do is about storytelling and, you know, these social media, YouTube is a great platform for that. And now we just need to have those tools so we can start creating richer content. Oh, sorry. You go. Nani. No, no, I'm just laughing. <laughs> That's one of our biggest projects that we've been working on this year has something called reach.love. And um, that is a WebXR, a button base immersive tool kit for people that they can publish across devices, headset, web, 
phone. And the idea being, it's still, a, you know, I've been bootstrapping it, so it's still kind of an alpha plus beta minus, but we're literally building tools to do exactly that, to democratize the way that we make immersive content uh, as much as, um, uh, you know, the way that we are using our phones. I, that's exactly what we're doing. So you can check out reach.love. Um, Dara, I can't tell you how much fun this conversation is. Thank you so much for- I know, this is, <laughs> I, I'm really, really excited by this. I've been loving sitting back and you guys are now interviewing each other. And actually the next question that I was about identity and identity politics and how can we actually, bet, where is that? You, you stated it perfectly, Carrie, to talking about what about, value do we provide on a human level not just you know how can we make this transactional or how do we make this profitable so you actually already you guys are doing great without me um i want to bring up something though that uh, i'm here i'm really curious what both of you think and it might turn into a debate i don't know there has been a lot of flack that the fashion and the beauty industry i also tag cosmetics in here for a number of reasons um because you know they're so connected as industries fashion and, and cosmetics but uh both of those have gotten a lot of criticism for unrealistic beauty standards everything from only very specific bodies on the runway certain types of looks um for certain types of bodies you know what is acceptable what's not the the media side of both of those industries definitely has perpetuated that but there's the commercial end of that meaning like oh if you're not buying these trends at these times or these luxury brands then your self-worth is questioned etc what do you think as people working in the digital fashion space designing that part of the metaverse where do the ethics of the beauty and fashion industry lie. When you're talking about designing for spaces that are not real, even if uh, you know parts of it could be sold on the blockchain, et cetera, and, and therefore validating a, a, a real-esque sense, or you're having a real relationship, a real memory that you're creating with these pieces of art, where are the ethics of designing? Where are the ethics of making sure, especially when you talk about giving value to community or to consumers or to patrons, um, how do you navigate things like diversity? I mean, Nani, you brought up blue and green skin. It, that's a very interesting way to, to choose models or to design models. Also, how, like, how, how, do, you, how do you navigate these choices? I, I'm just curious. I'll stop defining examples. I, I, know, I wanna I know. know. For, for our runway with GCDS, we designed a number of bodies. Unfortunately, we didn't get as many of the bodies in as that we wanted. Um, just simply, um, I, when I tell you we melted computers, we melted computers and, um, we had really some of the most high end, uh, uh, you know, rendering computers, you know, with this professional grade. Um, but, but trying to do real time with all the lighting and the shots and the models and the animations and the clothing, you know, and the hair flow and the da, 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 da um, some things, you know, plus getting all the marvelous designer problems solved. Let me give you one example of like why for us, like we got to do some bodies that we want to do, but, mm -hmm. but to one of the, our finale, she's wearing like a, a bralette made of gems, but we, the software that we built it in marvelous designer didn't have any way to reproduce that fabric. So we had to actually, and it was right at the end, trick the software into uh, uh, the drums. We made them all buttons. So the software thought it was dealing with buttons, when in fact we replaced the button with this gym to make it flow and go, right? Well done. But that kind of time that it took to get that right sometimes detracted from the bodies. And, and I think, you know, I think we all wish we'd had more than we had. But I still think it's got some pretty interesting different looks. And I do think digitally, the fact that we can even consider these very, very diverse bodies digitally, I my hope is that, um, like if you look at, we have got Rasa in there and she looks gorgeous in this skirt and top. And I, but my hope is that that feeling, even in this, you know, limited number of bodies we had that were, were um, 
of different shapes. I think diversity of skin color, like I said, was a lot easier and different, you know, um, and male and female or, or gender neutral, et cetera. That was a lot easier. But um, I hope that when people look at these bodies on a runway like this, that they see themselves. Um, that's the yeah. power. Yeah, that's absolutely the power of the digital world as well. Uh, and uh, that that's so, sometimes we get the remark as well that people are able able to see themselves better in digital clothing when there is not like some crazy hot supermodel wearing the mm -hmm. stuff, but like a model that is more representative to them. And what what we talk about the fabricants uh, quite often is about body positivity, uh, gender fluidity. Uh, inclusiveness, like it, it starts with awareness. Like we we need to understand what all of those mm -hmm. words mean, and we need to understand what that whole uh, community is all about. And uh, it, it it is extremely difficult, but we try to educate ourselves. And uh, a project that we did most recently was with uh, Vogue Singapore, um, where we created an androgynous body, which was a slightly masculine body, uh, quite skinny with a little bit muscles, but also like someone of breasts, you know, so it was kind of a, a hybrid, you know, man, female body with more of kind of a male tendency, but then wearing this kind of like gala dress with like these kind of big bubbles coming off the head. And then it's like, cool. it just looks like, like the aesthetic style is something completely different than uh, what's used to in the fashion world. And again, we just, I think fashion is always about trying to find, you know, something that's not obvious something that feels slightly uncomfortable, something that's just kind of in the middle of that, of just being like, do I like it? Do I not like it? Something that creates curiosity, you know, like you can hate it, you can love it. As long as you have, as long as there's a reaction and that's just like, I, I just don't care for it. And that's, that's what we're constantly aiming for. And I have to, I have definitely have to shout out, uh, give a shout out to, you know, Giuliano, the designer for GCDS and that team and that they, we're very keen on having diverse body types, uh, diverse runway. When we first talked about one of the ways we were gonna um, provide, when we first talked about it doing it as a game versus doing it in virtual production, um, we also talked about letting people come into the experience and um, have be able to see their own hands and then just pick, a, have a whole rainbow literally that you could be, right? You could be anything you wanted to be when you came into the space. And so, it was not only just like reflecting the diversity of the of of who we are as a species, but also the diversity of who we can be and who do we want to be and how to open up the notion of self um, and how that could be reflected in the fashion. And I okay. and I have to say that because he was so open and so excited about these ideas and and brought them to us in this way, it it really gave us some um, you know blue sky thinking. Can, can, can you tell more about that experience? Uh, it sounds super cool. It's like a real time fashion experience where people have like an avatar. You get to change. What, what do you mean by changing the colors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that that was what we were gonna make. Then that would have been in a game engine, so that when you came in, in fact, we're, we're building some. We're building this crazy game right now on great rock and roll hotel room trashings. Um, it's not all rock and roll actually, but it's so you're you're actually in scenes that have happened in real life, played to a song from the band that did the trashing with some flexibility there but that we're going to give you ability when you look down at your hands to choose what does it look like what you know certain tattoos da, 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 right so nice. so this is something we've been thinking about for a while but for the experience when we were you know the, the, as we we're designing and thinking about it and conceiving it we didn't end up doing it this way but the blue sky was how do you let people be who come into the experience in this very open way yeah um, yeah and be who you Great. want to be in the space i've uh we're, we're getting close to time which is really sad because this is a great conversation <laughs> uh I'm, I'm bummed um that being said though and you might have to pause to consider it what would be like the dream project the dream fashion tech project for each of you and your studios take some time Nani, Nani you go first it gives me time to think. <laughs> I, I kind of know it. I kind of know it. <laughs> I see you, Carrie. <laughs> no, I, I think, you know, um, it was funny with my team because we worked so hard on this project for GCDS. I mean, like, 
the last bits were just like a real fashion show where we didn't sleep, you know, for the last week. It was nuts. But that said, the beauty of what ended up being made, um, would I do it again in a heartbeat? It's like, wouldn't it be fun to just sit with the designer from the ground, kind of, I guess, Carrie, what you're doing. This is why I, I started to hesitate because I'm like, well, maybe you should be trying to work with Carrie um, uh, with this idea of like, how can we make clothing? Absolutely. Yeah, you totally clothing should. Clothing from scratch that like, I can imagine being utilized in a story that might bring some social change or social good. Mm-hmm. So that's where I was awesome. going. Could I find a, a designer who would be willing to work on the clothing that, you know, a combination of putting on blockchain so we can actually raise money for real world problems, address a real world problem, try to create some social change within the piece. So that would be a dream project for me is using the fashion art to also do this, do this integrated weaving back and forth into stories that I care about in real world solve, helping, helping make some change in real world problems. I love that. I, I, I totally love, love that. Totally. Yeah. That is cool. Yeah, Carrie, you and I are just jinx. We're saying the same thing. I love that. And there are so many to to make your dream come true, Nani. There are so many amazing independent brands, like slow fashion brands. We didn't talk too much about sustainability, as I said, but now now is a shout out to all of those designers uh, that work in fashion and also certain creative technologists that do that I'm aware of that overlap between fashion and tech that are really trying to create looks, even if they're just in concept, that are not taxing to the earth, that are raising awareness for things. There's some there's some awesome designers. This is a, a little bit off the topic of, you know, like a more immersive tech focused fashion. But you're making me think of people who make those coats. I'm forgetting uh, this one designer's name, but makes coats that turn into sleeping bags for the homeless. And then imagine doing like some really cool thing digitally working with someone who is so community oriented and could also bring the design goods. So I, I love your point and they're out there. They're out there. Those designers exist. <laughs> um, yeah. What about you? Yeah, Nani, we, we should definitely do something like that together. I, I love when there's a social impact aspect and, you know, using technology for good, using digital only fashion for good. Absolutely. And I think that's something that maybe we should have a discuss after this. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about my, uh, my let's say a l- little bit more futuristic vision project that something that we're, we're already working on and it's constantly in the works it just there's a lot of technological limitations we want to allow similar to to the smartphone where everybody gets to be a photographer and a videographer we want to allow everybody to be a fashion model a fashion stylist a fashion photographer oh, a fashion cool. content creator where the where a, any consumer or user or person gets to co-create their only their digital only fashion collection either together with a brand together with a designer together as a group and really democratize fashion in that sense where even the most introverted gamer nerd who just likes to put on black clothing black t-shirt will feel like that they're excited about fashion they're excited about creating their identity in a new way and actually taking risks in the virtual space because it might be a little bit scary to do it in the physical space to start putting on crazy clothing and crazy dresses and go out on the streets but in the virtual space it's totally safe and that's where you get to try things that might be pushing your identity and your stereotype a little bit further than we're used to i think that's kind of the top level vision that i would love to enable for everybody to have. That was beautiful. Both of those answers were were awesome. Thank you. And thank you for being part of this talk. Thank you for being part of South By. Thank you for teaching me so much and answering these questions and just having this conversation. This was great. And uh, you guys are wonderful. I just wish you could go on longer. <laughs> me too, me too. Thanks it's so been much. really, really thank fun. You. Thank you so much for organizing us and bringing us on. And Carrie, it was really a delight to meet you. And I'm, I'm yeah, looking forward to further conversations. Absolutely. Bye now. Thank you so much both.